Welcome back everybody. Happy Sabbath. Um, today I am back in my normal location in my room. You know, thank God. Actually today was a great day actually. I I wouldn't be um I wouldn't start not by saying that part. It was a great day today. But you know what's even better? We are gonna dive deep into Proverbs chapter three. And we are going to finish this chapter today and I'll move on to chapter four. Now, let's get active. So last time we stopped at verse number 22, if I'm not mistaken, or verse number 23, uh, I think it was 22, yeah. So we're going to start in verse number 23. Um, if, you didn't, if, you, if you don't know exactly what we're talking about, go back and watch the video um it's in a i have that same playlist called the book of proverbs you can watch all the videos from chapter one to right now let's get in 23 then shall thou walk in thy in thy way safely and thy foot shall not stumble when thou liest down thou shalt not be afraid yea thou shalt lie down and thy sleep shall be sweet now when God says this, that's about wisdom, remember? Talk about wisdom. It doesn't mean you're not going to have any troubles in life. It doesn't mean everything's going to be sweet and honey, uh, like people make it look like. Um, yes, there's going to be trial. But at the end of the day, even whenever it comes to your problems, God will be able to take it for you. And think about it. If God says, you know what, um, this time, your time has come, then you should be, thank you God, because I am tired of this fight. People will, people will look at it as, oh, that's a bad thing. Like, but actually, no. So, don't, I'm not saying to look for death. No, not that way at all. But when you live, when you let your life um, in God's hands, people can try to do anything to you. But there's a limit they will not be able to um overcome and that will be you sleeping gracefully and patiently waiting for god 25 be not afraid of sudden fear oh wow i just mentioned that part without even reading that next verse be not afraid of sudden fear um neither the desolation of the wicked when it cometh for the lord shall be thy confidence and shall keep thy foot from being taken without no oh okay so basically as i mentioned earlier you're gonna have troubles but guess what do not be afraid of sudden fear covid came people were afraid i wasn't covid came i'm like eh whatever it's not gonna do anything to me even if people would try to create another because i do believe people actually made made of that thing they try to you know how when you were growing up, you used to have a cough, sneezing, or a headache? And it was like, oh yeah, just just do this, just do that, you should be good. But for some reason now, if you cough or you sneeze, oh, you must have COVID. Well, from what I'm seeing, it looks like COVID was just all those little um, sickness, or I should say, um, symptom. They put them all together and make it look like, oh, if you have any of these, then you have COVID. I never believed that it was COVID. I think it was something that they actually created so they, became, so they can force people to actually do things that they wanted. But, eh. Didn't, I wasn't afraid of it. Should never be afraid of it either. Anyone. And that's why God said, even when we don't be afraid of sudden fear, like COVID was a sudden fear, People who are afraid, people who are actually afraid of COVID, you know what happened? Whatever they told them to do, they did. Whatever. But now, people can actually see that. Interesting. They were trying to control our mind by doing this and this and this. But yeah, that happens. So don't be afraid of sudden fear. Let's move on. Without not good, withhold not good from them to whom it is due, when it is in the power of thine hand to do it. Say not unto thy neighbor, Go and come again, 
and tomorrow I will give thee when thou hast it by thee. Yes, people. There are people that would that would try to be like, oh, you know what? Um, right now I don't have anything. Um, if you come back maybe you know, next week, I may have something. In the meantime, they have that thing in their room, in their kitchen, in their living room, in their bedroom, and they would not want to help you. If you can help you people, even if it, even if the person despised you, help them. Quick story. When I was growing up, um, I had all kinds of names. I think I mentioned that before in one of my other videos. I had all kinds of names, you know, uh, because um, if you if you laugh too long, too much, they call you Vivi, like myself there. I had that name all the time, Vivi. Um, if you didn't talk right, they call you Begwe or Egari. Uh, if you don't walk right, <laughs> they call you Hedik, <laughs> Kokobi. They had all names for me, paranoia and all that. But even those people that were calling me all those names, when they were hungry and they asked me for food, you know what's funny? Whenever I didn't have the, the food yet, I would tell them, hold on, I'm going to cook it for you and I'm going to call you back so you can have it. Or if we had food, if I, if I had bread or I had other kind of food, not even raw, cooked food, I would give it to them. If, it were, if, only, if I only had a raw food, I would cook it for them. Like, even the person, even though the person may be calling you names, don't use that as a way to not help the person when that person is in need. And that's exactly what God is saying right here. Withho withhold not good from them to whom it is due. Even if the person is the evil person, if that person is hungry, <laughs> yes, feed that person. I know it's not the, the message people like to hear. Oh, the person hate me, I have to feed him. Yeah, or her. Yeah, always also do that. Um, don't tell them to come back. If you have it right here, give it to them. If you have it, but not in a, in a way that they would need it, then do what is necessary so that they can have it in a way that is beneficial for them. I think that's why I said also, even when I had raw food, I would cook it for them so they could use it. Let's move on. Verse number 29. Devise not evil against thy neighbor, seeing he dwelleth securely by thee. Strive not with a man without cause, if he hath done thee no harm. Now, um, some people will try to return evil for evil. There is a time God says to do that part. And that's basically... A vengeance is for him. Now, one of the things that I used to do, I, I used to do is whenever I whenever I try to harm somebody, not physically, but in other ways, is if they try to talk trash about my God. That's that's one of the quickest ways for me to be angry. If people have said so many things, and I'm like, what did you say about my God? You know, then. It's like a whole different story. Like, but don't try to be angry because somebody calls you a bad name. Somebody um, curses at you. Like, no, that, that's whatever. But if somebody is trying to tarnish your name, then you need to do something about it. That's why it says, verse number 30, Strive not with a man without cause, if he has done you no harm. Somebody cussing, cussing, cussing at you, they didn't do any harm to you. That won't affect you. But somebody trying to destroy your name and your reputation, now something needs to be said because that person is trying to tarnish your name so that other people can look at you in a bad way. That is unacceptable. You need to actually do whatever it takes to make sure your name is well taken care of by anybody else that comes in contact with you. Envy not, envy thou not, verse 31, envy thou not the, the oppressor, and choose not of his ways. For the forward is abomination to the Lord, but his secret is with the righteous. 
What does forward mean again? You guys remember? Well, forward means the those that depart from the truth. Or, yeah, those that are guile, that are devious, those that are um, in the evil mindset, those people, God says is, is an abomination. Yeah, I'm not going to go to that word right now. But abomination. Um, there are seven abominations in the Bible. Right? But we're going to look at them maybe in the future. Maybe, if God wants. Um, so, the oppressor. Don't try to imitate the oppressor. Do not envy the oppressor. Don't choose your... You know how people like to talk about, oh yeah, um, here in the U.S. it's about, oh, it's racism, 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 racism. I'm like, uh, how about you stop thinking about racism and start doing something for yourself? But at the same time they talk about racism, they do the exact same thing that they are saying that is wrong. When it comes to them, they are okay with it, except when it's being done unto them. So do not, do not try to do what the oppressor is doing. Because then you become an oppressor as well. If you hate what the oppressor is doing, then you will, you will not do what the oppressor does. But what I'm seeing is people, they hate the oppressor, but they like what the person, what they like what they were doing. So whenever they become in that position, they do the exact same thing the oppressor was doing. Ain't nothing good about that part. Let's move on. Verse 33 and 35. The curse of the Lord is in the house of the wicked, but he blesseth the habitation of the judge of the just. Surely he scorneth the scorners, but he giveth grace unto the lowly. The wise shall inherit glory, but shame shall be the promotion of fools. So to all the atheists out there who say that there is no God, shame shall be your promotion. To all the scorners out there. You know what a scorner is, right? Let me tell you what a scorner is. You see, a scorner is a person who put people in, der who put people in derision. Who makes, who makes a mark, it becomes a marker. Those who mark God, those are scorners. Do you see any of those, all of those videos on YouTube? Somebody marks God, and then what happens to them later on? Yeah, that's one of the time when I actually um, get really angry, when somebody marks God in front of my face. That's when I'm more likely inclined to like bring a curse upon that person. I'll be like asking God, God, no, even I am mad. You need to do something with that person. They will never, and I, th I think one time I did that, and then somebody was talking to me, and I said, yeah. And he was like, hey, man, have I ever done anything to you? And I said, no, but you did something to my God. He said, what did you do? And I said, you said this and this and this, and therefore I put a curse upon you. Anyway, I mean, I, I wasn't the one that put the curse because I can't. But God put the curse on that person because they were like, and I was like, yeah, that was really, really, really bad. Like you had, you had crossed the line. And so God, whenever you, somebody mocks God, then there is a curse that falls on that person. They may not see it right away, but they're going to see it. Now, it might take a few days, a few weeks. But they're going to see it. Nobody can mock God. Like, nobody. Even the devil doesn't do that. Imagine you. And then, of course, the curse of the Lord is in the house of the wicked. Whenever somebody, um, a child of God, puts a curse on a wicked person, it doesn't just go to the person like that. The person has to do something really, really wicked for that curse to work. And God doesn't just curse wicked people. But there is a time when they go over the line. And God is like, okay, now you've crossed the boundary. No more of this is allowed. So yes, the, to the people here, listen. Get wisdom from God. 
life is going to be very great for you. But remember this. Do not be afraid of sudden fear. Neither of the desolation of the desolation of the wicked when it cometh. And again, this is the open field TV. Food for thought.